Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, uh, we're going deep really deep into the world of experts. You might think, experts? Yeah, they just know stuff, right? But what if I told you they're hiding something? Biting something. Not intentionally, of course, but because their brains are kind of playing tricks on them. Okay, now you've got me intrigued. What's going on in those expert brains? Well, there's this fascinating phenomenon called the, uh, what is it, the 70% rule? Ah, uh, yes, the 70% rule. Yeah. It essentially means that, well, when experts try to explain what they do, they unknowingly leave out a huge E chunk. It's not intentional. It's simply because so much of their knowledge has become automated, unconscious, you know, through years and years of practice. It's like an iceberg, but the conscious knowledge, just the tip. Okay, that's a bit mind bending. So there's all this hidden knowledge lurking beneath the surface. This isn't some conspiracy theory, right? We've got actual research on this. Oh, absolutely. Researchers have been studying this for decades, looking at everyone from surgeons to computer programmers to, yes, even teachers. And they've consistently found this gap between what experts know and what they can actually explain. Okay, I'm hooked. Let's unpack this. Why does this happen? Is it some kind of secret society vow of silence? Nothing quite so dramatic, no. It all comes down to the way our brains work. You see, there are two types of knowledge, declarative and procedural. Declarative knowledge is the what and the why. Facts, concepts, you know, the stuff you can easily explain. Okay, got it. Declarative is the stuff we can talk about. What about the other one, procedural? Procedural knowledge is where things get interesting. This is the how the automated unconscious stuff we do without even thinking about it. Think about driving a car, right? You don't consciously think about each step, it's become automatic. That's procedural knowledge in action. And for experts, a huge amount of their knowledge is procedural. So they're not trying to keep secrets. It's just that so much of what they know has become so ingrained, so automatic, that they don't even realize they're doing it. Exactly. And that's where the 70% rule comes in. Because when experts try to teach, they often rely on their declarative knowledge, the stuff they can explain. Hmm. But that's only a small part of the picture. They unknowingly leave out all the crucial procedural steps, all the subtle decisions and adjustments that they make without even realizing it. So it's like trying to learn to ride a bike by reading a manual, right? You get the theory, but you're missing all the subtle adjustments, the balance, the feel, all that stuff that makes it actually work. Precisely. And that's why traditional teaching methods often fall short. Think about lectures, textbooks, they're all focused on declarative knowledge. But if we want to truly learn from experts, we need access to that hidden 70%. Okay, so this is a problem. We've got all this amazing expertise out there, but it's locked away in people's brains, inaccessible to the rest of us. What can we do about it? Is there a way to unlock this hidden knowledge? There is. And that's where cognitive task analysis, or CTA, comes in. CTA. Okay, that sounds intriguing. So it's like a secret decoder ring for expert knowledge. You could say that. CTA is a set of techniques specifically designed to unpack that hidden 70%. Instead of just asking experts to explain what they do, CTA uses carefully crafted questions and methods to get at that unconscious procedural knowledge. So it's not magic, but it sounds pretty close. Can you give us an example of how this CTA thing actually works? Sure. Imagine we're trying to understand how a master chef creates a perfect souffle. We wouldn't just ask for the recipe, right? Sure. We'd want to know why they choose certain ingredients, how they know when the egg whites are perfectly beaten, what subtle cues they're looking for in the oven. That's the kind of depth that CTA aims to achieve. So we're digging into the expert's intuition, trying to understand the why behind their decisions, not just the what. Exactly. And here's where it gets really interesting. Sometimes not being an expert can actually make you a better teacher. Wait, what? That sounds counterintuitive. I know, right? But there's research to back this up. There was this fascinating study with neurologists, you know, six year medical students and second year med students. They were all asked to diagnose some neurological cases. Okay, so I'm guessing the neurologists nailed it, right? Expert brains in action? <laughs> they did. But here's the twist. When asked to explain the diagnoses and recall specific details, it was the sixth year students who performed the best. What? Yeah, they were still close enough to their learning experience to remember the key steps in reasoning, while the experts had already automated so much of it. So sometimes being too close to a subject can actually make it harder to teach. That's a bit of a mind bender. It is, and it highlights the importance of understanding how expertise develops. We start as novices, relying heavily on declarative knowledge. But with practice, more and more becomes procedural, automated. 
we move from conscious effort to unconscious competence. And that's the expert trap. They've become so good, so efficient, that they've forgotten what it was like to be a beginner, to struggle with those early steps. Precisely. And that's why CTA is so valuable. It helps us bridge that gap to make the implicit explicit, to bring that hidden 70% to light. Okay, I'm officially hooked. We've got this hidden knowledge. We've got a tool to unlock it. This is feeling like a detective story for the brain. What's next? Tell me more about how CTA actually works in practice. Well, that's a great question, and one we'll be diving into in the next part of our deep dive. We'll explore the specific techniques involved in CTA, look at some real-world examples of its success, and even discuss how you can start applying these principles to your own life. Stay tuned, folks. This is where it gets really interesting. Welcome back to our exploration of expert knowledge. Remember how we talked about that hidden 70%, the unconscious expertise that even experts struggle to explain? Yeah, it's like a secret vault of knowledge locked away in their brains. But luckily, we've got the key, cognitive task analysis. Exactly. And CTA isn't just a theory. It's a practical tool with a proven track record. Think of it as a detective kit for knowledge, helping us uncover the hidden steps and decisions behind expert performance. So let's get down to business. How does this detective work actually happen? Walk me through it. Well, the first step is assembling your team of, you could say, expert suspects, or rather expert participants. You want individuals who are truly masters of the skill you're trying to decode. And uh, the more diverse your expert pool, the better. Different experts might have different approaches, and that's valuable information. Makes sense. Like, if we were doing a CTA on, say, writing a best-selling novel, we wouldn't just talk to one author, right? We'd want to interview a whole range of successful writers from different genres with different styles. Exactly. That way, we can start to see the underlying patterns and principles that drive success, regardless of individual style. Okay, so we've got our dream team of experts assembled. What's next? Do we just ask them, hey, how'd you get so good? Not quite. Remember, we're trying to access that unconscious procedural knowledge. So we need to get a little more strategic with our questions. Okay, give me a sneak peek into the CTA interrogation room. What kind of questions are we talking about? Instead of asking general questions like, how do you write a great novel? Mm. We'd ask things like, what's the very first thing you do when you sit down to write? Mm. Or imagine a new writer is stuck on their first chapter. What's the most important piece of advice you'd give them based on your own experience? Ooh. I like that. We're getting into the nitty gritty, the specific steps and decisions that experts make almost instinctively. Exactly. We're prompting them to think back to their own learning process, to articulate those subtle choices that have become second nature to them. This is reminding me of that study with the neurologists and the med students. Sometimes being closer to that novice experience can actually make you better at explaining things. Maybe that's why CTA interviews are so effective. They force experts to step back and see things from a beginner's perspective. That's a great insight. And speaking of effective, there are a few different types of CTA, each with its own strengths, depending on what you're trying to uncover. Oh, like different tools in our detective kit. Tell me more. One common technique is called the critical decision method, or CDM. This one is especially useful when we're dealing with high stakes decisions, like in emergency medicine or aviation. Okay, high stakes. I'm picturing a pilot landing a plane in a storm, or a surgeon performing a life-saving operation. What does CTA reveal about those kinds of situations? Well, with CDM, we're not just asking, what did you do? We're asking, what were you thinking? What cues were you paying attention to? What options did you consider? And why did you choose that specific course of action? So it's like rewinding the tape on those critical moments and analyzing the experts' mental processes step by step. We're not just looking at the outcome, we're trying to understand the how and the why. Exactly. And often we'll use visual aids like timelines or decision trees to really map out the experts' thought process. It's like creating a roadmap of their mental pathways. Okay, that's fascinating. But what about those everyday skills, the things we don't usually think of as expert level, like writing an email or organizing our schedule? Can CTA help with those too? Absolutely. Remember, CTA can be applied to any skill where there's a gap between what someone knows and what they can actually do. For example, imagine you're trying to learn a new language. You could use a CTA technique called the cognitive walkthrough to analyze the learning process itself. Cognitive walkthrough? That sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. Am I plugging into the Matrix to learn Spanish now? Not quite. It's actually much simpler than it sounds. With a cognitive walkthrough, you essentially put yourself in the shoes of a beginner and walk through the process of learning the language, step by step. At each step, you ask a series of questions like, 
What's the goal here? What actions can I take? What feedback am I getting? And where might I get stuck? So it's a mental dress rehearsal, trying to anticipate the challenges and roadblocks a beginner might face. Exactly. And by doing this, you can identify potential pitfalls and design a more intuitive and effective learning experience. You're essentially hacking the learning process itself. OK, I'm starting to see the potential here. So whether we're talking about landing a plane or mastering a new skill, CTA can help us unlock that hidden knowledge and make learning more efficient and effective. Precisely. And we've got some amazing real world examples of how CTA is already being used to improve performance in all sorts of fields. We'll dive into those next, so get ready for some inspiring stories. Welcome back to the deep dive. We've been exploring this fascinating idea that experts are hiding knowledge, not on purpose, of course, but because their brains have automated so much of their expertise. It's like they have this secret stash of knowledge they can't quite access. And we've been talking about how cognitive task analysis or CTA can help unlock that vault. Right, and we've even touched on some of the techniques used in CTA, like the critical decision method and the cognitive walkthrough. So are you ready for story time? Story time. Yeah, we've got some amazing real world examples of how CTA is making a difference out in the world. Oh, right. Of course, yeah. Always love a good CTA success story. So, which one are we going to dive into first? Well, one that always comes to mind is how CTA was used to improve the training of air traffic controllers. Air traffic control, wow. <laughs> Talk about high pressure. There's no room for error when you're, you know, guiding planes through the sky. Exactly. And for years, the training relied heavily on simulations and on the job experience. But, you know, it sounds like there was something missing. There was. Researchers started to realize there was a gap between how experienced controllers actually made decisions and what was being taught in the program. So they brought in the CTA detectives to solve the mystery of expert air traffic control. You got it. They used CTA techniques to analyze the decision-making processes of those veteran controllers, paying close attention to their strategies and the factors they considered when faced with, you know, complex scenarios. What did they find? Was there some secret handshake they weren't teaching the newbies? Not quite a handshake, but CTA revealed that experienced controllers relied heavily on mental models and heuristics that weren't explicitly part of the training program. Interesting. So they had developed all these shortcuts and strategies through years of experience, but they weren't being passed on to the new recruits. Exactly. It was like they had this whole toolbox of tricks that they weren't even aware they were using. And by using CTA to bring that hidden knowledge to light, they were able to revamp the training program, making it more realistic and effective. So CTA helped make the skies safer. That's incredible. So tell me, are there any downsides to CTA? Is it the perfect solution to every knowledge gap? Well, like with any tool, CTA has its limitations. It can be time consuming and resource intensive, especially for you know really complex skills. So it's not like a magic wand you can wave to instantly download expertise. Unfortunately not. But even with those limitations, the benefits of CTA are undeniable. It's helping us bridge that gap between what experts know and what they can teach, making learning more efficient and effective. Okay, so we've learned a lot about CTA, but how can our listeners actually use this in their own lives? It's not like everyone has a team of researchers at their disposal. Mm -hmm. That's true. But there are still some key takeaways that everyone can apply. First, remember that even the most skilled experts might struggle to explain what they do. So don't be afraid to ask specific probing questions when you're trying to learn from someone. Dig deeper and try to uncover those hidden steps. It's like being an investigative journalist for your own learning. Exactly. And when you're learning something new, try to think about the process from a beginner's perspective. What are the potential roadblocks? Where might you get stuck? By anticipating those challenges, you can make your learning journey much smoother. And finally, remember that we all have areas of expertise, even if we don't think of ourselves as experts. By becoming more aware of our own thought processes, we can become better teachers and communicators. That's a great point. We all have something to teach, and CTA can help us unlock that hidden knowledge and share it with the world. And that's the beauty of it. CTA isn't just about training experts, it's about empowering everyone to learn and grow. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. We've learned that experts have a hidden stash of knowledge and we've uncovered the tools to unlock it. And most importantly, we've seen how those tools can be applied to make learning more effective and empower everyone to tap into their own expertise. That's a wrap on our exploration of expert knowledge. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep diving deep into the world of knowledge.